Hey, it's Mazzy. Welcome back. Another best of list for 2023. These are my very favorite record covers and record album packages of 2023. Now, uh, I've been doing a series of best ofs. Again, it's always subjective. It's my personal take. And I do talk about the music. That's the primary thing. But as record buyers, record collectors, another great thing is the packaging and the artwork. And those of you who have followed me I might know I was a photo agent for 38 years until very recently. I still dip my toe into it and do some consulting, uh, representing wonderful photographers for art and design, commerce, artistic, uh, album covers, advertisements, and so on. I work with, used to work with illustrators as well. And over the years, I worked with a, just a, a wonderful group of art directors and designers from all areas of commercial art for the most part. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the artwork because that's another reason, aside from this wonderful music, why we buy records. We like the physicality and we like to hold it up and read the liner notes, obviously, but look at the photographs, the art, illustrations, and design. So I just went through uh, some of my favorites. Now, a little caveat, I did not use reissues. Basically, like all the great tone poets or the Reed Miles and, and Francis Wolfe photographs. I mean, those are something that have been around uh, for 50 years in some cases, some cases more. So I just am showcasing records that have new art. Now, sometimes there's a couple here that are best of or recycle things uh, that have come out, but um, whenever possible, I'm going to give you the names of the designers and illustrators and photographers, because I think that's really important. They need credit and I think in all but one case, there was credit, one I couldn't find. And what's that about, really? And one was so small, I had to photograph it and blow it up. Come on, if you're going to do a 12 by 12, make the type at least uh, legible. So I want to start out with uh, Devo's 50 Years of uh, De-Evolution. This cover art is by Tomo77, and he's an artist I've been following for the last several years. I bought some posters of him out of a gallery, uh, some very political posters out of a gallery in uh, Portland, Oregon, um, I guess just at the midst of the pandemic and really great stuff. I love his, his very um, revolutionary kind of style, almost WPA murals as well. Um, this was art directed by Roy Wilson, usually art director, does the layout, design, incorporates all the other elements of the cover. But to me, a great uh, illustration or ph photograph can make or break a, an album cover and can and can lure you into something that you don't know about. So uh, this is Devo's comp, 50 years of de-evolution music. Next is the newest Peter Gabriel um, album. Uh, this is a photograph photographer that I'm well aware of. In fact, some of my photographers have been considered along with him, but he's a great photographer, uh, Nadav uh, Kander. And uh, this designed by uh, Mark Besant, did the design with a concept by Mark Besant and uh, Peter Gabriel as well. There are certain artists that are very entrenched in their cover work. And uh, yeah, I know how hard it is when you are a photographer, an illustrator, working with a client who doesn't understand design and photography. And that's where an art director, you really appreciate a good art director and designer that can translate that to the client. Now, when you're working with a, an artist like a musician, they usually have a sense of design in some cases. Some cases not, there's some pretty ugly ass covers out there. But um, the whole package on this one uh, with booklets, a booklet uh, is really pretty lovely and pretty uh, wonderful illustrations. Now, I'm not listing all the illustrators here, unfortunately, but he picked a series of various illustrators and artists, photographers, to illustrate each song on the album. Uh, so this is a wonderful use of art, a wonderful uh, assignment for a photographer and for an illustrator to illustrate, you know, a lyric and uh, beautifully done in this. So uh, Peter Gabriel's album, I.O., his first album of new music in something like 22 years, but a fabulous conceptual cover. If you look at the detail on that, obviously done with uh, manipulation of some sort of Photoshop, I assume. Now, this is an album I didn't include in my best of. Again, I'm not talking about the music here, but I just love this cover. This was art directed by Jeff Gans, and this is from a, a found painting, an old painting from 1917, 
by the artist Thomas Moran. And this is, of course, uh, this is uh, Seven Psalms by Paul Simon. Very surreal, elongated piece of music. I love this record. Didn't include it in my top records, but it's still a beautiful record. Uh, this version comes with that. It comes with an, uh, a beautiful insert, a printed version of the cover. So you get a su suitable framing cover. It's nice to have a, an extra, you know, if it's a beautiful image, an extra cover art thing if you want to hang it up. I rarely do takes up so much room, all these things, but I love having this uh, printed on beautiful kind of watercolorish digital artwork on watercolor paper. So Paul Simon's uh, work with a painting called The Owls from 1917 by Thomas Moran. Now this one I really like, but this one didn't have a credit, which really surprised me. Now, uh, this is Marty Stewart's and, and the Superlatives. Uh, this is a uh, wonderful record called Attitude. Love this record of sort of psychedelic cow punk or cowboy music, country rock in a way. Now, I assume this is sort of from an illustrator, a vintage illustration of this writer, but I still think they could have had somebody laid this out. Someone curated this and designed it. So, But I love this cover, obviously reminiscent of other cowboy covers like uh, Sweetheart of the Rodeo by the Birds from 1968, and that's where this album takes off on. But there was no cover, and I didn't even see any photo credit anywhere, unless something slipped out. I looked for the insert here, no credits at all. And if I missed it, if you have it, put it in uh, down in the comments. If you have this album, and know who the photographer was and who uh, designed did the layout on this. Okay, the next one is on World Circuit. They do a lot of African music and a lot of world music. Uh, and this is Ale Farka Torre. Uh, this is a, some recordings that hadn't been released, some that were finished off. And this is a beautiful cover. This is a photo by Ann Hunt on here. So this is an obviously an older picture since we lost him maybe 20 years ago now. Design is by Florence de la Forene. I love how on this side, it's kind of this reverse thing. That could be a cover as well and that can be a cover. So it's almost like a double thing, but if you look at it closely, that's literally like the design of a cassette. And if you fold it, you would make a very large uh, cassette. But I just love the graphic quality of this, the World Circuit Music. That's Jeff Gold's label. Uh, they also did Buena Vista Social Club, uh, reissues of that as well. But this is really a dynamic, beautiful design. And this is where the design comes in. Obviously, you can take a photograph and do so much with it or an illustration, but great design, a great eye for layout uh, to me is really important. Uh, wonderful record called Voyager by Alifaka Torre. Great album. This is a photo by Godless, a series of photo by Godless. I don't know who that is, but it goes by the name Godless. Designed by Mark Ohi, O-H-E. This is Yola Tango's uh, new album this year. This Stupid World and all these great photographs by the same photographer laid out with some wonderful inserts. And I just love a little bit of this night shot, this found night shot. Uh, I just love this kind of photography. Very fine art photograph style taken and uh, created uh, for this album cover by Yola Tango. Next is an album. The album musically came out digitally and on CD actually in 2022. But the vinyl didn't come out till 2023, which means there was two vinyl releases of this artist. I like this album uh, cover better than the second album they put out this year. Really the first, you know, semantics, right? Wilco's Cruel Country. I love this sort of vintage uh, doily that somebody created here. Now, the design is by Lawrence Azerod and Crystal Myers. And what's also great about this is this poster of vintage found uh, postcards in here. I'm trying not to have these perforations come apart, but each time you fold it out, it's very difficult, <laughs> as you can see there. But look at these vintage postcards, almost like the 1920s or 30s there. I just love that. This is gonna fall apart, like, there we go. So you saw it here first, that's literally an unperforating. I don't do unboxing, but I apparently I do unperforating. Uh, but this is kind of cool. It has the credits of the songs on here. So there are probably more credits in here that I missed, but uh, this is Wilco's album. 
cruel country. Great design. I just love, you know, the great thing about records historically, as we all know, we were growing up posters and postcards and ephemera uh, within an album cover, and that's really a nice one. Now, this is one by uh, someone I know through the vinyl community here, who's a musician and on his own right, in his own right, and put this EP out. This is Material Objects Passing Through. This is Dominique. Uh, Seeking a Thread is his channel name. This is a lovely fold-around EP. Um, now, I love this record. It's almost post-punk-ish. Little Joy Division, but a little... You know, Indie is the, the fallback name for everything these days, and I hate to say that. But since I'm not talking about the music here, it, it folds out in this tri-fold, just literally loose cover sleeve. But look at this design. Look at that beautiful the subway shot. Uh, this is a statue in Paris. I do have the credits here, which I'll read off to you. The cover is La Passe Mural. Uh, this looks like a, a mural in Paris, France. Photo by Trey Burney. The first and second fold, Deutsche Bahn. The Deutsche Bahn, I guess, the subway. Photo by, photo by Deutsche Bahn. Uh, the inner fold, uh, the Andorondics. Uh, Earth, photo by Angela Levy. And the insert is the train stop by Trey Burney as well. There's the insert there. Kind of a cool little extra vellum uh, printed photograph. Uh, the Andorondex is these beautiful organic, obviously, walking on the East Coast fall, late fall, early winter, possibly before the snows. But I just think this is a, a this is a, a really wonderful, beautiful cover. Again, one of my favorites for 2023. And again, Material Objects, I believe the LP version or the EP version of this is sold out now, but uh, you can find them on Bandcamp as well. I'm a big fan of type treatments, sometimes a really great type treatment. And this band is a band out of Portland. Uh, this is uh, Night Beats, and this is Rajan. I just love the graphic element of this. And of course, uh, he was in a band that used to be called... Um, Wooden Chips, spelled S-H-I-J-P-S. -S uh, kind of a neo-psychedelic electronic band, but now they're more of a country psychedelic thing. All his album covers have a psychedelic graphic feel. Some, you know, psychedelic cowboy covers and things. This is the newest album by Night Beats. I've seen them. They're really a, a fun psychedelic rock and with a country uh, you know, elements to it. Um, Psychobilly, I guess. Uh, fantastic, but I love tight treatment like this. Artwork by Blackwell and Coco. Uh, this came out on uh, Suicide Squeeze Records, but a fantastic graphic element. Another one I only got into recently, and I just love this simple cover. It's almost like, it's so graphic and so wonderful, is The Twits. And this is a UK, this is, I believe their, is their second, third, or fourth? I don't remember what. This is my first. My friend Brooks turned me on to this record. Kind of um, punkish, but almost lo-fi punk, but uh, a male and female vocalist, but the twits out of the UK. I just love how this is it's so lo-fi in a way. It matches some of the music, but it's a fantastic record as well. So I love the use of tight treatment. Uh, this is the twigs, excuse me, the twits, the twits. Uh, this is a record that I actually considered in my top records of the year. This is uh, Exotico by Temples. I just love how this cover illustration painting is so beautiful. In a way, it's a surreal thing. It reminds me a little bit of Moby Grape's Wow, not quite, quite as surreal. Uh, but I love uh, the, the color palettes on this, the blues, the yellows, uh, and the montage like assemblage, I guess, if you will. Artwork is by Tom Furse, F-U-R-S-E. The layout is Artonix. Artonix is the layout. This album was produced by Sean Ono Lennon. Uh, as much as I love this record, I like it a lot. It's almost too thick in its production wise. I would like to hear more because I have their first album, which reminded me of like the 60s Who in a way. Then they got a little more electronic. There's more electronics on here. But again, I'm not here to talk about the music, but I just had to because I realized I haven't shown this record this year. But I really like this record a lot. But the artwork to me got it uh, t 
to add it to this list here. So this is Temples Exotica. Exotico, excuse me, it's O, not A. Uh, this is from a series. Now this was distributed by Light in the Attic. And this is a series that I'm all in on. And I bought, uh, there's three of these, but there's a companion series or a parallel series. This is called Pacific Breeze 3. Uh, these are comps of Japanese city pop. And this one is Japanese city pop, AOR and Boogie 1975 to 1987. It's very kind of pop, dancey, disco-esque. And I love this, almost like based on traditional Japanese. And this cover art is by Hiroshi Nagai, designed by Norsen Design. This, again, Hiroshi Nagai. I just love uh, Japanese artwork like this. And the whole series takes on pretty much the same imagery with different color palettes on each volume. This happens to be volume three, came out earlier in the year. Um, but I love this series, they're double albums, and they trace each artist and have covers of each artist. So that's Light in the Attic, and that is Japanese uh, Pacific Breeze, Japanese City Pop. Next is an album that was included in my best of the year, and this is Das Coolies. This is the electronic pop, dancey offshoot of Super Furry Animals without Griff Reese, uh, but it's, Beautiful harmonies as well as a lot of electronic beats and things. Sometimes it's very intense in a lovely way, but then it gets into some wonderful music. But I love this sort of digital version. Now this is artwork by Mark James Works. Now this was problematic initially for me to figure this out because when you have an album cover on a 12 inch, why make the type so small like that? Okay, this might even, was it gonna focus there? There you go, see? So I had to take a picture of it and blow it up on my phone to actually read this. And I have glasses, so come on, Dust Coolies, come on, Art Direction. You know, if you're gonna do a vinyl version, make it legible, please. Save the little ones for CD, because people don't give a crap on the CDs of the artwork. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But anyway, Dust Coolies love this. This is very graphic. This is amongst my favorite. I don't know why, just something about it. It almost seems like, uh, you know, very Asian, very Japanese style uh, of, uh, of cover art, but beautiful, beautiful cover art. Then another record by uh, a friend of mine, actually, uh, a duo called Balmoray, and this is our Deutsche Gramophone. And this record is Pendant World Balmoray. I just love the surrealistic cover of the almost etherealism, which matches this ambient music. Now, there's three records uh, that I've, been wanting to include and include my best of because they didn't fit with the pop music. Now, you don't have to um, only include pop in a top record or rock in a top record, but this and two other records I, I may in the new year put together of the rest of the best because I love this record. Very surreal piano, guitar, uh, cello, uh, some woodwinds. Uh, it's just a lovely, lovely record. Now, this cover photo is by Dylan Hosthor. That's how you pronounce his name, Hothor, Hothor, uh, designed by uh, Elizabeth Antoine, or Antoine, Antoine possibly. But I just love this cover design and this ethereal, it almost seemingly is underwater, but obviously it's not underwater, you got the spider web, but it seems like that. And, the, and this kind of soft focus, black and white uh, tone is, um, is very surreal. And I just love what they did on this and this uh, back graphic cover design on Deutsch Gramophone. In this case, there is an insert of them playing, but to me, this is uh, this is really a kind of a, a dream-like album cover that really fits fits the music really nicely. Balmoray on Deutsch Gramophone. Next, I have the soundtrack of Oppenheimer. Now, something like this, obviously, all the photographs are taken from uh, the, the motion picture production, whether it's a frame from the uh, IMAX cameras or possibly, in, uh, you know, the on-set photography, which uh, film shoots always have someone shooting, but it'd be a combination. But they really did a wonderful job on the design on this. Uh, the design, the art director on this is Mo Shafiq. So he put these together, I guess. You, you call things, what happens when, the, when you do movie posters and, and uh, record things, you get a lot of the, whether it's the in-house production, but usually a third party a design firm that specializes in motion picture design, sometimes record design. And obviously there are design firms around that just do wonderful, you know, design work independently. And 
I've been the, had the pleasure of work with a handful of over the years, but I love how they use the images from this film. Of course, the images itself are so dramatic and you have this trifold. It's beautiful and ominous at the same time when you obviously have uh, uh, the device there. Uh, just a lovely record. I do like, and I realize I didn't show it as close up, when some of these labels take the design, let me go back really quickly to this because I just realized it's like Japanese origami art. They take the design to the insert. You never really see the insert. So some would say, why bother printing on that side? And I just love when an art director, you know, adds the detail of a printed inside like that. It doesn't happen very often. Um, it does happen in this because you have, obviously you have a booklet in here which takes frames uh, in the production of the film, but you have the elements, that orange of the, the bomb site and the explosion within the center of the, um, the inside printed cover. But this is a great, great uh, album soundtrack and, a, and really in, just beautiful in a, uh, a, a frightening way, how beautiful you know, nuclear explosions can be in a weird way. Now, every year there's a series of Grateful Dead things that come out, and I just love that psychedelic or neo-psychedelic, obviously, some hark back uh, to the uh, poster artist, the Wells Wilsons of the world, and uh, who did the Avalon of film or pro, uh, posters in the 1960s, uh, the Grateful Dead, Jefferson Airplane alike. Um, Anton Mouse Kelly as well. But um, this is done by Masaki Koku, Masaki Koki, excuse me. And uh, the design was Fix, fix Design, P-H-Y-X. But I just love this almost mandala-like cover. Uh, there's a slight, there's a metallic inks used on this. I'm really a fan of uh, some things when they use a spot varnish or embossed or debossed things. You know, go the extra mile when they can budget-wise. Uh, one of my favorites, what I, which I did not include, the Rufus Wainwright. I love it because it has all that great embossing and, and um, spot varnish uh, covers and images in the book itself. But um, I didn't include that in this particular video, but I love the cover package of this one. And this is of the Boston Garden from 1977, I believe something like that, May 1977, Grateful Dead, Rhino Records. One of my favorite designers is Kim Horthe. Kim Horthe uh, was the primary designer and art director for Room Gramophone, the Norwegian label that has a lot of jazz, avant-garde, uh, minimalism, uh, free jazz, and this was one of my top jazz records of the year. This is Fire Orchestra Echoes. All his uh, records have a sort of uniqueness, yet they all are recognizable as being from Room Gramophone. Uh, this is a great one. This is a three record set. This is a, an amazing record. And obviously he always takes the design elements. Uh, if it's a multi-record set, uh, there are books out on uh, all the art direction he's done for the label. I have maybe 15 of their records and every one is an amazing cover art and he designs all of it. So I love that idea when a label, you know, has an identity and a visual style. So right away you recognize uh, who put it out. Now, two of my very favorites, aside from that, I'm gonna end with, I have two more. And this is Som de Sound, this is David Silverman box set. This is a CD box set with a wonderful book. Uh, the design, well, the art direction is David Silverman. He's someone also who has his hand on the design of his, uh, of his music and his releases. The design and, and calligraphy is by Chris Big with Reuven Van Empel as the artist who did the cover art here. They took from his artwork, I don't know if he designed it specifically for this or they took some of his work, but the beautiful design of each sleeve of the CD, uh, just a wonderful, wonderful package. Uh, this is my second favorite, maybe tied 
for my first. Now, I didn't do those in order, but these last two are definitely my favorites of the year. But obviously, there's a beautiful book that goes through the entire catalog of his recordings. Now, these are images from those existing records. So those are uh, images that we, they've, we've seen before, if you follow David Sylvian. But a wonderful artist in his own right. Uh, he was in the group Japan and has worked on a lot of uh, records on his own. Obviously, this is from 2003 to 2014 when he left Virgin Records and started his own label. And this is music from that period. Uh, just beautiful, uh, ethereal, dark, brooding, electronic, sometimes folkish, uh, sometimes very experimental at times, and just really lovely. And finally, the one that's my very favorite of the year in terms of design and photography, and that is Intrigue. This is a 7LP box set. There's a CD companion, obviously. Uh, this is a, a comp box produced by and, and curated by Stephen Wilson of Porcupine Tree. And uh, it's progressive music, sounds in the UK alternative music, 1979 to 1989. This is an amazing set. Uh, there's book and different covers. Uh, this is a project design and photography by Carl Glover of Aleph Studio. Portrait photography by Hejo Mueller. And it is a stunner of a set. It goes through each song. It goes through the albums, pictures of the album covers. But original photography that kind of represents very graphic architectural type elements really beautifully uh, put together. I just love this. Let me just show you the individual sleeves and we'll do a closeout on that. Intrigue, Stephen Wilson comp, probably the most beautiful designed set of 2023. Very graphic, very kind of European, almost Bauhaus in design style. Nice to use a type as well. So since I appreciate photography, work with the wonderful photographers over, over, you know, most of my life, I just love this type of artwork. And this is another reason why I'm a record collector, why I'm a vinyl collector. Obviously it's the music first, but if you're gonna collect a 12 inch record, it's nice to have Beautiful artwork. Uh, thanks for watching. The best of 2023, the best cover art album covers. Mazzy loves you.